We're at Castro Valley Station. Let's get on our train and I'll tell you what I'm doing today. So I'm leaving Castro Valley now and heading up towards Richmond. Normally, on this type of trip, you have to change from the blue line to the orange line at Bayfair. But with the new schedule, we're going to have to wait at Bayfair for 17 minutes. I don't want to wait around for that long. But if you think about it, there is another way to get to Richmond. So the Richmond train is indeed scheduled to arrive here in 17 minutes. But we're going to skip it and try for the West Open thing instead. So as you saw, we didn't get off at Bayfair. Instead, we're continuing all the way to West Oakland, where we'll switch platforms and catch the Red Line train coming in from the other platform. That train will overtake the Orange Line train that we would have gotten had we waited at Bayfair and save us about 10 minutes. This isn't just me nerding out about the schedule, though. It's actually what BART want you to do on the official trip planner. The only problem, though, is that the transfer window is really tight. One or two minutes at most. And West Oakland doesn't have an island platform, so you can't just walk across and catch the next train. You have to go down and back up again. So why is this solution so contrived? Well, on BART, there are a lot of different transfers that people can make between different lines, but the trains aren't that frequent, so timing the transfers to be convenient and reduce wait times isn't very easy. They did a whole podcast about this a while back, and I really recommend giving it a listen, but the short version of it is that they wanted to factor in the reverse direction transfers as well, or as they call it, the wrong way transfers. For example, on a trip between Dublin and Berryessa, where the first train and second train are in different directions. Those ones were not optimized on BART before, but they have the data that shows that people do make these trips, so they wanted to consider them in the new schedule. So now you imagine giving your scheduling algorithm or whatever even more constraints to work with, it's gonna have a hard time optimizing everything. So there have to be trade-offs, and it seems like this trip cut the short end of the stick. But fortunately, BART's solution is rather creative. Well, it sounds nice in theory, we need to go see if it's actually practical in real life. So here we go. This is it, it's do or die. Oh, I did see that other sign flash Richmond, so the train must be here. This is it. Let's go, we made it. I decided to get off at 12th Street instead, but it does still prove the point that this transfer will save you time. As you can see here, the next Richmond train is indeed the orange that we would have gotten. He would have gotten here in eight minutes. So we have saved eight minutes on this trip. So just some final reflections on this whole experience. I do think it was very nice to see the train, the red line train at West Oakland wait a minute to actually let people make the transfer. So it does seem like it is something that BART are ready to go through on. Obviously, my big thing is that the display screens on the trains need to be updated to actually specify that you shouldn't change to Richmond at Bayfair, but rather at West Oakland. Um, but I do imagine that will come in time because, you know, the software is actually managed by Alstom. So it's going to take them some time to like get it up to sync like there are some software issues with the new schedule more broadly especially with the service change with the red line you know the animation between Millbury and SFO is wrong so that needs to be changed but overall it was nice to see that BART is actually putting a lot of effort into fixing up their transfers making them you know more natural more convenient even if they do require a little bit of maneuvering as we had in West Oakland but like it's no different to say a, a MacArthur transfer between Richmond and Antioch that would also require you to go down and up again so it is effectively the same experience there but yeah I'm really looking forward to seeing hopefully soon the display screens get up to date but that is pretty much it for this video um, you will notice also that I have gotten a new mic I do want to do more sort of these live 
on the ground videos that will you know require a lot of live footage and stuff so yeah I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to do more Meanwhile We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived